God bless you all in the mighty name of Jesus, and we thank God once again that we're able to be in your homes this evening. And uh, we thank God for the Christmas season that is uh, fast approaching, and uh, I just pray that you will, you will not forget, like they say, the reason for the season. Jesus Christ is the reason why we're celebrating Christmas. And let us not get um, overexcited about um, the other things and forget the fact that without Jesus Christ, of course, there will be no celebration of Christmas. And I pray that our minds, our focus shall be on Jesus this season in the mighty name of Jesus. Most especially as we're in the end times, and I say it a lot, when the end times, we need to focus more on the fact that Jesus is coming back soon, whether we like it or not. Jesus is actually coming back soon. But I pray that none of us will be found wanting at the last call, that all of us will make it when Jesus comes back again in the name of Jesus. Some people are saying, well, they've been saying that Jesus is coming back soon for how many years that he has not come back. The bottom line is that one day he will definitely come back. And when we look at the signs that are going on in the world today, you just need to read the newspapers and to watch the television, watch the news. And even just look around you, the world has degenerated into a cesspool of wickedness and evil. And the evil is not even far from home because sometimes we look at what is going on in the world and it's like it's far, even within our own families. A lot of things that could not happen a long time ago or even as short as 20, 30 years ago, they are happening right now. And of course, the Bible predicted it. There's nothing that is happening that you don't see in the Bible. God did not keep us to be unaware. So then again, we don't need to be surprised and say, oh, why? What is happening is happening. But this is the time we should hold on to God. This is the time we should focus more on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And this is the time where we should not allow the distractions around to distract us. That's, I said, that's why I said that even during this Christmas period, there's the enjoyment of Christmas, the eating and the buying of presents and giving of presents and so on and so forth. But that's not the main thing. That should be secondary we should not forget the fact that Jesus is coming back soon and that is what I have for somebody this evening and um, I just want to inform us or rather remind us I mentioned it yesterday I'm sure I think pastor mentioned it one once or twice last week we're having um, a 23-day program 29th 30th and 31st of December and it's going to carry us into the new year and it's going to be all night programs 29th, 30th, and 31st. And uh, it's going to be a prophetic night. That is what the pastor said. It's going to be a prophetic night. So you don't miss it. It's a, going to be a night of power and a night of the power and the glory of God. And this is going to be the first time that pastor is going to have such a program at the end of the year since he has been here. So there's a reason why God said that he will have this program. And make sure that you don't miss it. Make sure that... Um, you don't allow the distractions of the season to stop you from coming for this program. <coughs> like I said yesterday, by next week, I'm sure that Pastor will come out with all the details concerning this program. Praise the Lord. So before we have, you know, we go into what we have for today, I just want to invite you all who are watching for this session of praise and worship. And as you enter into praise and worship for the next few minutes, God will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. You are a mighty, magnified El Shaddai. You are a mighty, magnified
And uh, before I start um, for what God has for us today, I'll just invite my sister as usual to speak a word into your lives and God will bless you as you receive that word in Jesus' name. Good evening, viewers. We welcome you once again to Jesus Sanctuary Ministries uh, Hour. We thank God once again for your lives and what God is using this ministry to do in the lives of people, in the lives of our viewers. What I have to say as we draw close to the end of this year, 2016, God may have promised you one thing or the other. You may have things you're believing God for. Some of them may have come to pass, some are yet to come to pass. But I can assure you that he who has promised is more than able to bring it to pass. So whatever you're believing God for that has not yet manifested, keep looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, of our faith. He will surely come at the time he will come. He's never too late. He's never late. He's never early. God is always on time. Remain blessed and enjoy the rest of the show in Jesus' name. Amen. God is never late. He's never early, but he's always on time. So we need to wait upon the Lord and wait for his timing because God's timing is the best. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yesterday we were talking about remembrance. We are, today we are talking about Thanksgiving, of course. It still has something to do with remembrance because when we are reminding when we when we are reminding God like I said when God said put us put me him into remembrance and one of the ways to remind God is through thanksgiving of course and even when we thank God even if we are just thanking God for the God will always, that will cause God to even remember assuming God was not even thinking about you at that time which of course we know that God always thinks about us anyway but what I mean is that if that situation wasn't what God was focused in. When we thank God and thank God, it will it accelerates things. I can assure you that. Just as fasting accelerates answers to our prayer, when we add mm -hmm. fasting to prayer, thanksgiving also accelerates the manifestation of God's promises to our lives. When, you're, when you keep on thanking somebody for something that the person is yet to do, only that the person promised that they will do something, the person will do it. Assuming your husband or your uh, says that he wants to buy you a car or maybe your wife says she wants to do something for you. And then every day you're thanking the person, ah, that which you say you're going to do, ah, God will bless you. Anytime I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is after praising God is to thank God for that which you promised me. Mm -hmm. If the person tells you that every day, even if you are saying you are going to buy that thing in the next three months, you will look for money and buy it what? Immediately. Mm -hmm. Because the way the person is thanking you you wouldn't want to disappoint the person. Mm -hmm. You see the person's hope and the person's belief and trust in you. Ah, you quickly go and say, if you don't have the money now, mm -hmm. let you go and borrow. Instead, <laughs> when the two or three months we're waiting for comes, you begin to pay off the loan. And so it is with God. Because you're constantly bringing before God what he said. You're constantly bringing it before God. And of course, that shows that your, our hearts are, you know, in tune to God. We believe God. One thing that God does not like is when we doubt God, just like you will not, you will not like it if your own child doubts you or if your wife or your husband doubts you. So when we are always thanking God, we are showing God that we have no doubt whatsoever about what he promised, that we know he has done it as he has spoken. Mm -hmm. So thanksgiving is a way of accelerating God's promises to come into manifestation in our lives, just as I said, fasting to accelerate the answers to our prayer because it causes us to, to fasting puts you in a, in, a, in a spiritual level that you may not be with only prayer. Why? Because when you fast, your body becomes weak. And when your body is weak, I mean, when your body is weak, there are certain things you cannot do. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody who is weak cannot easily commit sin. Mm -hmm. If somebody even says something to you, that's not the time to quarrel. You may decide to quarrel, <laughs> but then you say one or two words, you may not spit it out of hunger, so you will not quarrel. <laughs> it's true. There are a lot of things that you cannot do. There's not, flesh cannot do a lot of it's things true. when it's weak. So that's why spiritually the person is more alert more and alert. more in tune to God doing fasting and when they are praying than when you're just ordinarily praying. Mm -hmm. So the same thing with thanksgiving, it accelerates. And I think that we have every reason to thank God even in this season, we should thank God for Jesus. Without Jesus Christ, we cannot be talking about heaven. We can't talk, be talking about salvation. Before Jesus Christ came, those 
the um, the patriarchs of old, they all entered into Abraham's bosom. Mm -hmm. They were all in Hades, on the other side of Hades, until Jesus Christ came and he now set them free when he died and he went into the grave and set them free. And the Bible said that he, he led captivity captive. Mm -hmm. So you find out that we have every reason to thank God in this season. We have every reason to thank God, if nothing, but for the fact that he has given us the gift of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm which translates to, to the gift of salvation and the gift of reconciling us back to him and the gift of eternal life. And that makes us to be sure that when we die, we will make, make heaven. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And uh, my sister, please just go to the book of 1 Thessalonians 5.18. The book of 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Because, we ha like I said, there's so many reasons why we need to thank God. But well, one of the things is that when God promises us something, when God has revealed something to us, like I said yesterday, one way to accelerate the manifestation is to thank God. It shows that you really, really believe God for what he has spoken or promised in our lives. Yes, my sister. Okay, First Thessalonians 5.18. Yes. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. He said, in everything, give what? Thanks. thanks. Not in one thing, but in everything, in every situation, we should do what? Give, give thanks. thanks. We don't just give thanks just because things are the way we want them to be or things are the way we, we like them to be. But in every situation, every circumstance, in everything, we should do what? Give thanks unto God. One thing I believe strongly is that there are things that may even happen in our life that we may not understand, but God understands and God knows why he allows certain things to happen mm -hmm. in our lives. As far as you know that you're walking in righteousness with God, you're in right standing with God, you're a child of God, anything that happens to you in that situation, it is for a reason, it's for a purpose. There's a time, I, I think, I don't know when I mentioned it, I was talking about John chapter 9, when Jesus Christ and his disciples, they saw a blind man and the disciples were asking Jesus Christ, is it this man that sinned or is it his parents? And Jesus said, none of them. The man didn't sin, the parents didn't sin because of his blindness, but that God will be glorified. Mm -hmm. So you find out that it wasn't because of anything they did wrong. It's because God wanted to show forth his power in the life of that man. And he did that by causing that man to see. So you find out that there are things in our lives that happen when we are walking in obedience to God, when we are walking in right standing with God, there's, sometimes God could be training us for a, a ministry has called us to. Sometimes God could be developing our spiritual muscles, our tenacity. Sometimes God could allow certain things so that we can see God clearly because it's in the midst of sorrow or darkness that light shines brighter. So we may not know why, but as far as you know that, it's not a case of maybe we are careless spiritually or one thing or the other. As far as you know that, you are in right standing with God, you're, you're in right relationship with God, you're not neglecting the place of prayer or Bible study or, or where you're supposed to be in the church. Then anything that happens, what are you going to blame it on? Are you going to blame it on that you did not pray? Mm -hmm. Are you going to blame it on that you did not obey God? No. As far as you know that you have done all you should be doing, then there must be a reason for it. And that is why the Bible said, in everything, give thanks. And I found out that sometimes when we focus on thanks, things happen in our lives that we may not be expecting. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So he said, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So it's not just that the Bible is saying in everything, give thanks, but it goes on to say that this is the will of God. So it is God's will that we give thanks. It's God's will that we give, that we show gratitude. Mm. We will realize how much God has really done for us. Like I tell people, sometimes just sit down and begin to go through your life and begin to focus on those areas that God has done a lot. Mm. The fact that you are still alive today is a testimony to the goodness of, of the Lord. Mm. There are some people who came in here into this country. If they tell you how they came in, some went through Libya, some went through the desert, went through all sorts of things to come to this country. Some died by the wayside. They did not die. And today they're in this country and today they've gotten their papers. Mm -hmm. It's enough to thank God. Those other people that died by the wayside are not better than you and I. Mm -hmm. 
they are not better than the people that made it. Those who have gotten their papers are not better. Who, who do not, don't have their papers are not better. There's some people, 20 something years they're in this country, no paper. There's some people, after eight years, they've gotten their paper. So, what you need to understand is that we, ever, we always have reason to thank God. And when God sees that we have a heart of gratitude towards Him, not only will He do that which He has promised directly to us, He will do other things in our lives. And that is why we need to give every day, no matter what you're praying for, no matter the type of prayer you're praying, never ever forget to give thanks. Don't just jump into the prayer. Make sure you give thanks. And it's always good to even specify. Not just say, Father, I thank you, I bless you. Remember certain things and begin to say, thank, I thank you for this particular thing. I thank you for this particular thing. There was a time, I think it was some, some years back, I think 2011, if I'm correct, because I was recalling it with pastors some few days ago. And I, I went into prayer that night, and as I was singing, something I was getting that check to stop mm. singing, but I didn't understand why. Mm. Then I began to ask the Holy Spirit why. He said that I should go straight into thanksgiving. I said, okay. And he said I should begin to thank him for every person, my family, my in-laws, every just I should be, mm. anything I remember to mm. thank him for, I should thank him for mm. them. And I began to thank, he said, call their names. I begin mm. to, so I began to call every person's name. I was remembering one by one and thanking God for one specific mm. thing or the other. And after thanking God that night, when I went to bed, the kind of deep revelation that God gave me concerning certain people in the family, and there's no way I would have known. Mm. But it was just that thanksgiving prayer. But it was God that said, I want you to go into and begin to thank me. So it's like God, that thanksgiving prayer opened up a lot of things mm. concerning so many different individuals in the family. So you find out that Thanksgiving means a lot because you're thanking God and then God will do something. Mm. There's no way you can thank God and he will not do something. He, he showed that and I was really, so, and just three days ago, I was discussing with a pastor and I was saying, look at the revelation I had 2011, if you remember. And it, as I was saying it, he was saying, yes, I remember, I remember. Mm. It was after that night of Thanksgiving, that very night, just thanking God specifically mm. for every person. Say, call every person's name. Not, don't say this person and their family, even their children, call their name, their wives, their husband, everybody, call and begin to thank God. So there's, a, there's, there's power in thanksgiving. There's power in thanksgiving because sometimes we only focus on the negative. We need to focus on the positives as well. And when we are focusing on God, is to thank God. If your child, the only thing your child does is to come to complain to you. After a time, won't you get tired? If he's always complaining to you, you get tired. Mm -hmm. Or if the only thing the child does is to be asking you for one thing or the other, you get tired. <laughs> he says every time, he's only to ask me, any time you want to talk to me, is to ask me for something. That you will never talk to me, you will never come to my room, or that child has maybe grown. Mm -hmm. You will never come to visit me unless you want to ask for something. Even you as a parent, in as much as you love that child, you get fed up. That's true. You get fed up because you will not feel appreciated. As if to say that you're just an economic factor. Mm -hmm or somebody that is just there to be listening to problems. But if a, a child will just sometimes come and say, ah, daddy, mommy, can I do anything for you? Mm -hmm. Or come to you and say, ah, daddy, thank you for this. Oh, mommy, thank you for this. Just, not that you gave them something, but they just mm -hmm. come and say, oh, mommy, thank you for all the advice you have been giving me over all the years. Oh, daddy, thank you for the support you have given me. Would you feel warm in, inside mm -hmm. and be happy that the child just, you know, remember to come mm -hmm. and just thank you maybe for certain things you have done over the years for them. And that will now make you to begin to think, ah, this one my child is thanking me. Let me look for something to do. That's true. You know, I remember when um, my son was small, I think he was about six years. Mm -hmm. So they were having, um, I think, a wed wedding, wedding in the church. So he was trying to help them to... <laughs> so I was even telling him he should leave that place in peace. <laughs> So he was trying to carry a table. So the father was praising him. I said, ah, Toes, you're doing this. He's like, ah, for a table. I don't know what he wanted to go and carry again. <laughs> so, you know, just because ah, the father was praising him, I said, ah, you're really helping these people. Ah, thank you so much. He now looks for something bigger <laughs> to go and carry. So everybody likes gratitude. It's true. Everybody likes gratitude. God, so you can imagine how it is when you show gratitude to somebody and the way the person will react. Then you can imagine God, that you, you just came to God to thank him.
Even the things you didn't ask God for, he will begin to tell you, begin to show you, begin to do for you. Um, Philippians 4, 6 to 7, please, my sister, read. <coughs> Philippians <coughs> 4, 6 to 7. Okay, Philippians 4, 6 to 7. Yes. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. He says, be careful for nothing. So God is telling us, be careful for nothing, because no matter how much we worry, I think it's in the book of um, Matthew chapter 6, when the Bible said that we should not worry, worry. that our worry, we cannot add one strand of mm -hmm. hair to our head. And that is the truth of the matter. No matter how much we worry, no matter how much we complain, no matter how anxious we are. Anxiousness and worry will not change our situation. What will change our situation is turn to the one who can intervene in our situation and turn to him in thanksgiving that you know he's able to do that which he has promised. So he says be careful for nothing. It doesn't mean that you don't bother about things. It simply means that when situations arise, it shouldn't become a controlling factor mm -hmm. in our life. A lot of the times we allow negative situation to become a controlling factor mm -hmm. in our life, that we lose sight of the fact that God is over all these things. God is actually over all these things, and we need to go to the one who is over all these things. We need to go to the one who created everything, and no created thing is greater than the creator. Mm -mm. And we need to go to him in thanksgiving, believing that God will intervene in our situation. And that is why the Bible says, be careful for what? Nothing. For nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. So instead of worrying and getting upset, come to God in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Make sure that thanksgiving is part of our prayer and supplication. That is what the Bible is emphasizing here. He said, come to God with prayer and thanksgiving. And let your request be made known unto God. Not when the answer comes, you thank God. He said, be careful for nothing. Come to God with prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, add thanksgiving to your prayer. Make sure you add whatever type of prayer you are praying. Make sure that the element of thanksgiving is always there in your prayer. And present the request before God. That is what the Bible said. If we actually take the, the Bible at face value and do what God tells us to do, I believe that we will have more victories in our lives. Most of the time we enter into prayer, we're not thinking about thanksgiving. We're not thinking about God we're going to thank. We, are just, we go straight in. But we need to, when we're going into prayer, we're going into prayer with thanksgiving and carrying our request to God with thanksgiving. And you find out that your request will be answered faster. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And it continues, I said, and the peace of God which passes all understanding. So you find out that when you now do that, the peace of God will come in because when the mm -hmm. peace of God comes, it means that God is telling you, I've answered your prayer. Mm -hmm. Once you have that peace, you know that God has answered your prayer. And God will answer speedily when our prayer is mixed with thanksgiving. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I said, can you go to Matthew 6, 20, well, 25 to 34. We won't read everything, but okay. we will just pick. Matthew 6. Okay, from 25. Yes. <clears throat> Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, for what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into bands. Yet your heavenly Father, Feeded them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? 
O ye of little faith. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? And go up to 53, okay. yes. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So you find out in this reading, Jesus was saying, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or drink, and so on and so forth. He's not trying to say that we should just sit down and do nothing. But we should not become anxious or full of worry and begin to wonder, or oh, what, what is good. God is there for us. His name is Jehovah Jireh, our great provider. And he has promised that he will provide for us. He will supply all our needs. What we need to do is to go to him. Jesus was saying that, look at the lilies of the field, look at the fowls of the air. They don't worry. They don't bother themselves. He said, our worry will not add any strand of hair to our head. It's not going to add, it's not going to do anything. Worry, as far as I'm concerned, is a fruitless venture. Mm -hmm. It's not going to do anything. What we need to do is to go, go to God in thanksgiving, believing that God will always provide for us. Mm -hmm. How he will do it is not our business. All we know is that we, we know that God will do it. And that's why when we are praying and asking God, or t asking God for something, or bringing our supplication before God, like we read in Phil Philippians um, 4, we should do it with thanksgiving, because we have a God that answers prayer. And God will do that. And like I said at the beginning, when we spice our prayer with thanksgiving at all times, when we have an attitude of thanksgiving, no matter the type of prayer we are praying, we accelerate things in our lives. Mm. Just like if you're thanking somebody every time because they promised you something, the person will do it earlier than they even planned. So when we do that, we go, we're showing God that we have a heart of gratitude, that we love our Father, we believe Him, we trust Him, and we know that He will do it. Of course, he will do it faster than we even expect. And that is what God wants from us, a heart of thanksgiving. The first scripture we read said that it is the will of God concerning us. It is his will that we come to him with thanksgiving. And when we come to him with thanksgiving, he will do that which he has promised. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just want us to see this scripture. I just um, When I told you to read this, this other one, <coughs> the scripture just came to my mind. It's in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 51, okay. from from 12 to 13. Okay, Isaiah 51. Yes. From 12. Yes. I, even I, am he that comforteth you. Who art thou? That thou shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die, and of the son of man which shall be made. A grass, sorry, as grass, and forgetteth the Lord thy maker, that hath stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth, and has feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor, as if he were ready to destroy. And where is the fury of the oppressor? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know why this scripture just came, but I'm sure it's for somebody. Mm -hmm. And as my sister was reading uh, Matthew 6. This scripture just dropped into my spirit, so I don't know who it's for. But God is telling somebody, who, are, who is that person you're afraid of? Mm -hmm. He said, he's the one that covered his... He said, who as you are thou that you should be af afraid of a man that shall die? So as far as God is concerned, it is even an indictment for you to be afraid of a fellow human being. I don't know who is oppressing you. I don't know who is watching that you're being oppressed or you're being attacked or you're being fought or somebody is threatening you. God said that you have no right to be afraid of somebody who will die. Somebody can go to bed and not wake up the next day. God can intervene in any situation. No person, no power is greater than God. And the way God was saying it here in the Bible is like he was even saying it with anger. Mm -hmm. He said, and forgettest the Lord thy maker. It means that when you are afraid of a man because of his threatening, you're telling God, I have forgotten you. I have forgotten that you're God. I have forgotten that there's nothing you cannot do. You, you can call that person back at any time. He said, I forget the Lord that I make that stretched for the heavens and laid the foundation of the earth and has feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor. 
as if he were ready to destroy. Mm -hmm. And where is the fury of the oppressor? I don't know who I'm speaking to, but whoever I'm speaking to knows themselves. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know how this scripture has nothing to do with, with what we are talking about. We are talking about Thanksgiving. All of a sudden, this scripture came. If there's any person that is threatening you, God has intervened. Amen. God is greater than that person, greater than that situation, that circumstance that is threatening to break you, that is causing you to be afraid every day. The Bible says, fear not. And I'm talking to the person who God has this word for. Mm -hmm. You better push aside your fear mm -hmm. and not forget God who is able to intervene into that situation. Call upon God and he will answer you. Mm -hmm. He will answer you and intervene in that situation. And everyone will know that it is God Almighty. So you don't need to fear. You don't need to fear the oppressor because the oppressor is not greater than God. Praise the Lord. Amen. We have to stop here now, so let us, well, open the lines. And uh, you can, if you have um, a contribution, why not? If you have um, a prayer request, we'll be happy to pray with you, of course. If you have a question, because we're talking about Thanksgiving, but this particular scripture just came in. And of course, I have to say something about it because I don't know whoever it is that is fearful every day of their fellow man, fearful of the threatenings, fearful of the attacks. And God is never happy when we are afraid of our fellow man. Why? Because he's saying, have you forgotten that I'm there? Have you forgotten that I'm your God? Um, have you forgotten that there's nothing I cannot do? He said that the life of man is just like a breath of, it's just like smoke, like vapor. How long are we going to live on this planet Earth? People can boast themselves in wickedness, but God is the final say in any matter. Because sometimes people think that, oh, they're invincible. Everybody will die. You see, death, death is something that every person, nobody, nobody can live forever, no matter how much they try. And if God says no, no man, no woman, no power can go contrary to what God has said. If we keep that in mind and, and pray unto God and cry unto God, then God will intervene. Amen. There are people who have threatened people. There are people who, who feel they have, who, who have held families in their grip. But God has intervened in those situations. So I don't know. I don't say, well, this scripture is for somebody, but it's a scripture all of us should hold on to at every time of our lives to know that no matter how dark it may seem and no matter the backings of the enemy, no matter the attacks of the enemy, the person is still a human being. Yes. Satan is still created by God. Mm -hmm. Don't forget that. Satan is still created by God. What we need to do is to pray and call upon God. The God who created both the powers we don't see and the people that we see is to call upon God and we'll see God in action. Mm -hmm. We need to call upon God and believe that God will do that which he has promised. What we need to be sure is that our hands are clean. Yes. Once your hands are clean, then you don't have any problem. Once you are in right standing with God and you call upon God, why not? So I don't know. I was just surprised with that scripture. I said, ah, why? Then there, 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 must be, there must be something about that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So while we are waiting to, uh, my sister, please, can you go to the book of Ephesians 5, 19 to 20? Ephesians 5, 19 to 20. Nineteen to twenty. Yes. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, read verse four as well. Of oh, that same Ephesians five. Five. Okay. Yes. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. So you find out that here too is another, another scripture talking about thanks. Yes. And the Bible is telling us that instead of uh, foolish talking, instead of wasting our time, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. we waste our time. It doesn't mean you, you, you don't you know, chat with people mm -hmm. or you know, laugh with people, but sometimes we waste our time in foolish talking, things that profit nothing. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, out of that conversation, Nobody has learned anything. Nobody has gained anything. And the Bible said that in the, in, in the midst of, in the multitude of words, they wanted no sin. 
which means sometimes when we talk and talk and talk and talk and talk, we may not realize that there are things which we have said which are not, which do not glorify God, which are sinful. But he said instead of wasting our time in foolish talking, we should give thanks. It doesn't mean that every time you sit down and you say, oh, Father, thank you for this. Even when you're talking with somebody, you can be giving thanks to God by telling a person, I see what God did for me. I just thank God for what he did. You're giving thanks to God by telling somebody, I see what God, remember the things that God has, and share it with the person. That is giving, instead of wasting time on a fruitless venture and talking things which do not profit. And then when we go down to that uh, verse uh, 19, he says that we should give thanks always, that's verse 20, give thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Giving thanks always. So it's another, it's another command from God, just like what we read in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, that giving thanks to God always. And we need to ask ourselves, do we give thanks to God always? When we give thanks to God always, we will maintain a grateful heart. One of the things that I know, I think I was reading, uh, I think I was reading the book of Nehemiah today. And um, Ezra was reading, you know, he, he brought out the book of the law and was reading the law to the people. He gathered all the people. Then Nehemiah had finished the building mm -hmm. of the wall and he was reading. And in the, in the law he was reading, he was saying that when God brought their fathers, and their forefathers into the, the land of the Canaanites. Mm -hmm. And they were able to inhabit houses they did not build. And they were able to get vineyards they did not plant. Mm -hmm. And they fed fat and mm -hmm. things were going well for them. They now forgot God and began to kill. And even when God raised prophets to speak to them, they killed the prophets. And because of that, God had to, you know, touch other nations to deal with them because of their sin. One of the things I was able to pick up from that is that if they had maintained a heart of gratitude, ever remembering that these houses we have is God that gave it to us. These vineyards that we are eating the grapes from is God that gave it to us. These um, lands flowing with milk and honey is God that gave it to us. It's not our own efforts that gave us this land. It's not our own effort. If they continuously had that heart of gratitude, they would never fall away from God. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the reasons why a lot of the times people fall away from God. You see people who after a time, they stop coming to church. Even nations that knew God before. Mm -hmm. And God prospered them because of their relationship with God, because of their foundation of Christianity. Once they lost that attitude of, it is God that did this thing for us, and began to fall away and began to forget God, they will push God out of the government push God out of schools, push God out of everything. You find out that things began to be problematic mm. for them. Mm. So, so it is with us as individuals, with every person. Once a person, once a family, once a nation forgets God, the root of us forgetting God is because we have not maintained that attitude of gratitude. That the thanks unto our God is no longer continually mm. in our hearts. Once we forsake it and replace thanksgiving with complaints mm -hmm. or thanksgiving with, well, I'm okay. I, what do I need to thank God for? I have everything I need. Once we push God to the side, once he's no longer number one, then we open the door for the enemy to come in. And that is why it's an emphasis that we should thank God continually so that we do not forget our God, so that we don't forget the God who gave us life, the God that gave us salvation, the God that healed us, the God that has blessed us, the God that has opened our doors, the God that has given us children, mm -hmm. the God that has given us victory, that has fought our battle. When we now forget those, when we don't thank God continuously, it is very easy to forget. It's very easy to begin to think that it's my hands that have given me what I have. It's the work of my hands, it's my effort. There are people who make all the efforts and still they don't get anything. The Bible said that, that um, the race is not to the swift. Another mm -hmm. reach is to men of understanding. As in the book of Ecclesiastes, if you read there, you find out that there are people who have made it not because they have made so much effort, mm -hmm. but God has made, it, made a way for them. The person who founded uh, Facebook, what did he do? He just started it off as a, as a hobby. Mm -hmm. But today, that Facebook is worth a lot of money. Mm -hmm. 
Yahoo, who started Yahoo, was two engineering students mm -hmm. who just started as a, as a project to play around with. Mm -hmm. But look at Yahoo today. So it's not as if to say that it's by their own efforts. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not. So there are things that God has done, and you know that it's God that did it. But when we maintain that attitude mm -hmm. of gratitude, we will not forget. Mm -hmm. And when we do not forget, the enemy cannot come in. So I just encourage those of us who are watching to not allow ourselves to become complacent with our blessing, complacent with what God has done in our life, complacent with the way, you know, everything seems to be okay. We need to continuously focus on thanksgiving unto God every single day of our lives. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Amen. I just want to pray too for those who... Um, I still going back to this um, Isaiah 50. So I'll just pray some prayers. One of the prayers I will pray is for those who are watching. Any attack of the enemy, any continual attack of the enemy against your life, any constant attack that doesn't seem to want to go away, God says that he is the God that stretches forth the heavens. He, is the, he, he said that where is the fury of the oppressor? He said, you don't have a right to be afraid of the oppressor. So any oppressor bringing continual attack in your life, whether it's spiritual, whether it's true dreams, you're always under serious attack, whether it's physically. Today, I use the name and the blood of Jesus Christ to bind and paralyze those powers. Mm -hmm. Every power that is bringing oppression, bringing attack continually, a circle of attack in your life, I bind those powers right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Every power of darkness from the heavenly realm, the earth realm, or the water realm, every power sent on assignment to torment you, to torment your family. I use the name and the blood of Jesus Christ to bind and to paralyze those powers mm -hmm. in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I use the blood of Jesus Christ to separate between you and every activities of every tormentor and every oppressor assigned against you, assigned against your family. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Those powers that don't allow you to sleep at night. This night you must sleep in the name of Jesus. Amen. God said that he giveth his beloved sleep. God will give you sleep this night. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You will not go to bed afraid. Knowing that when you close your eyes and sleep, there will be an attack. This night you will see a difference. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And I equally pray too. That anyone that has been consumed by fear. The Bible says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. So any situation that you have found yourself, any situation that is negative, that is showing satanic attack, any situation that does not seem to seem, it seems as to you as if to say, there is no hope. Let me tell you there is always hope, because there's, God is always there. But fear has so paralyzed you that you can't even pray. Fear has so paralyzed you that even when you pray, you're not looking at how God will intervene. You're looking at the, the, the situation and how that situation will consume you. I use the name and the blood of Jesus Christ to bind every spirit of fear assigned against you mm -hmm. to keep you paralyzed mm -hmm. so that the enemy will get you. The enemy will not get you in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. That spirit of fear, I rebuke it in your life. I rebuke it in your family in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I pray that God will give you a sound mind that God will give you power and a sound mind mm -hmm. to follow him, to resist that fear, to not be overcome by that fear mm -hmm. in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Fear will not consume you. Mm -hmm. Fear will not hinder you. Fear will not fight you mm -hmm. in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I pray that God will give you boldness and courage to stand against any situation. Why? Because God is with you in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. When Joshua was called by God, to go in and possess the promised land. He said, do not be afraid. He said, but be courageous because I'm with you. He said, as I was with Moses, I shall be with you. So our boldness and our courage to go ahead, to face the enemy, does not come from our own natural boldness, but from the boldness that comes from the Holy Spirit because the Spirit of God is with us. Amen. My prayer is that the Spirit of God will make itself known to you, that the Spirit of God will be with you to, to enable you to stand against any oppressor, against any tormentor, against any taskmaster, 
against any person that will want to stand against you, against those who are boosting themselves in wickedness. Let the presence of the Holy Spirit give you boldness, give you courage, give you wisdom in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The enemies may be many, the canonized, the Gebershites and all of them, but as far as God has promised you what he has promised you, and the enemy wants to occupy that which he has given to you, today those enemies shall be uprooted Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever God has given to you, is it promotion? And the enemy is sitting on there and saying you will not be promoted. Is it that house that you have applied for and you're supposed to get it, but the enemy is sitting on it? Is it your paper, but the enemy is sitting on it? Today, my prayer is this. Any power sitting on it, just as there were nations occupying the promised land, but what happened? God caused them to be uprooted. As far as Joshua and the rest of the Israelites went forward in battle, believing God, obeying God, they were able to clear out all the inhabitants of the land. You too, by the power of the Almighty God, in your prayers, as you move forward, God will clear out every occupier of your blessing, every occupier of your promised land. Do not fear. That is what God is speaking to you today. Do not fear because the oppressors and the tormentors are saying, you will not get this, you will not get this promotion, you will not get this which God has spoken is your own. I'm telling you today that God has gone ahead of you and he will clear them from that place where they are standing and saying, you will not get this promotion, you will not get your paper, you will not get this, you will not get that. As far as God has spoken, you must get it in Jesus' name. That which he did for Joshua and the rest of the Israelites, he will do for you in your life and in your family in the mighty name of Jesus. We have just seconds to go, and my prayer is that, like I said in the earlier part of this program, do not forget that Jesus Christ is the reason we are celebrating Christmas. Do not forget that Jesus Christ, too, is coming back soon. And let our focus throughout this Christmas period be on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and for the rest of our lives. God bless you, God watch over you, and God keep you in your going out and your coming in, in Jesus' name. Remember our program 29th, 30th, and 31st. God will bless you as you come in Jesus' name. Good night and see you another time in Jesus' name.